In this video, we'll learn how to control the render stats of our individual Maya objects. Okay, so you'll want to go ahead and open up the scene file for this video if you're following along at home. Uh, as I've made some changes to this scene file, and you'll need to open the most recent version of it up to follow along with this video. Now, we've been studying the lights inside of Maya and how we can control what appears inside of our renders using some of the various attributes in the lights. Now, we actually have control over what appears in our renders at an object level here. So, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our scene. You'll notice that things are not quite looking right in the viewport. However, if we go ahead and just set off a render here uh, using the clapboard icon that we've been using, you'll see that Maya's render view opens. And once the render completes, we'll see that things don't necessarily render as they appear inside the viewport. Uh, after all, what appears inside of our render is what matters. Okay, so in looking at the render here, you can see that I've made some changes to the material for the gem in this little frame so that it appears to be sort of a, a, a glass-like material. I've also changed the material on the frame itself so that it looks more like a polished metal material. Now, let's go ahead and take a look here at what we're seeing inside of our scene. We've got some shadows here, some really nice shadows that are appearing. Um, now, in looking at this cube right here, you can see that I've got the material for this tuned so that it appears to be a reflective surface. And we can see, if we were to navigate inside of our render view here, uh, we can see here that we have a reflection of both the frame object as well as the gem object. And you can actually see the shadow that they're casting on the ground behind them is also being reflected here. Now, these are the things we're going to play with when it comes to the render stats for the objects inside this scene. So let me come over here and I'm just going to select the frame right here, the frame for that gem. And let's go ahead and jump into the attribute editor. Again, you can do that by tapping control A on your keyboard. And once we get in there, we're going to look inside the shape tab. And if we look in here, we're looking for the render stats rollout right here. Now, inside of render stats, there are essentially a bunch of check boxes that you're going to see at first. There's a few other things, but you can see here that we have the ability for the frame object to control whether it casts shadows, whether it receives shadows, uh, whether it uh, basically is visible in reflections, or whether it's visible in refractions. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and set off an IPR render here. So we can see this happening in real time. We'll go ahead and just click the IPR button right over here, and that will switch the Arnold render into IPR mode. And you can see this is sort of progressively refining. Now, we're going to pay attention to this reflection in our cube here. And I'm going to uncheck this Visible and Reflections box right over here. So as soon as I do, what you're going to see here, as soon as our render refines to the point we can tell, the reflection of this, sh uh, this frame here no longer appears inside of the reflection on the cube. Really, all we have here is the gem itself. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and come over here and select the gem geometry and do the same thing. We'll untick this visible in reflections. And there you go. You can see here that neither the frame nor the gem are showing up here inside the reflection that's on this cube next to them. Pretty neat. Let me turn those back on here, and we'll just quickly select that geometry and check that box. Now, let's go ahead and leave the frame selected like I do right now. And let's go ahead and turn off Cast Shadows. Now, you can see here, there's not just a tremendous amount of change here because most of the shadows that we're seeing are being created based on that gem inside. So let's do the same thing. Let's turn off Cast Shadows for the gem geometry. And as soon as we do that, you can see here, the shadow that existed over here behind is now gone, as is the shadow that was in the reflection. 
I think when we were working with the visible in reflections checkbox, you noticed here in the cube, the frame and the gem disappeared, but the shadow was still there. So if we wanted to completely remove those elements and the shadow, we would need to change the cast shadows box here for both the gem and the frame. If we were to come in here and let's just untick that visible and reflections box for both of those again. Just like so. And we'll let the IPR catch up for just a moment. Now you can see there is nothing at all visible in the reflection. It's almost like this piece of these pieces of geometry next to the cube don't exist at all in terms of this reflection. Okay, great. Watch what happens if I bring this cast shadows attribute back on for the frame. You can see here that not only does it appear here inside the reflection, it's the only thing that appears inside the reflection, even though we have visible in reflections turned off. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and turn some things back on here, sort of reset our scene back to the state it was in when we opened this file. And we'll let our IPR catch up for just a moment here. All right, great. Now there's one other attribute inside of render stats that I want to point out that can be very, very useful. And that's this primary visibility. Let's go ahead for the frame geometry here and let's turn off primary visibility and watch what happens inside of our render. We'll go ahead and uncheck that box. And you can see here that the frame around our gym has now disappeared from our render. Uh, or, or has it completely. Let's go ahead and wait for this to refine a little bit further and I'll zoom in for you so we can take a look at kind of the gem that is left over. So while yes, primary visibility will remove a piece of geometry from the render like it has here, you can see here that we still have these dark edges here that are left on the gem itself. So our frame, it is still casting shadows. Not only that, but you can see the frame is still visible in this reflection. So while primary visibility took the frame out of our render, it left the shadows that it's creating and it also left the frame inside of reflections. So primary visibility is again very, very useful. However, if you're wanting to completely remove an element from a render, there's some other boxes here you need to uncheck. Things like cast shadows, visible in reflections, and in the case of this gem geometry, probably visible in refractions as well, because with this geometry, we do have refractions going on because of the nature of the material assigned to it. Now you can see here with all of those checkboxes turned off, we're left with a clear gem here, and we're also left with only a gem in the reflection on our cube. Pretty neat. So in this video, we've learned that we can actually control how objects render inside of our render view based on these things called render stats. All right, great. With that said, let's move on to our next video and we'll be moving back into our spaceship scene and beginning to create lights that match with the environment.